else I hear? Well, my neighbor got a bucket of these triangles from another neighbor. And I think that the, they, the person had been working on something and then these are like the cutoffs. You know how much I love cutoffs? Ah. Anyway, he offered me the bucket and I said, sure. So I also have another friend that I made and she paints barn quilts. And so I went and found some pictures of barn quilts and this one's black and white, so I have it on my phone in color. But I'm going to try and do something like that with these little triangles. <sighs> Yay! Here they are, all laid out and stuff. And I've got some colors. I need four colors. So I have the four different stains out. And I figured out kind of how many I needed. So. Yeah, I, and I think I don't have enough triangles, but we'll see. We will see. I wanted a really red color, so I found this stain, and I can't remember the name of it, so I'll put it right here. I'm not even sure what these pieces of wood are. I'm thinking they may be cherry, and some of them are made up of two or more pieces that are glued together, and it's like all different shades of the same type of wood. Anyway, it looked as if the red was going to go on quite nicely, but it may need another layer or so. I also had some gray stain, and I put that on the number of pieces that I think I needed. I tried counting up all the shapes that could be made out of triangles on the picture I had printed. Then I used antique walnut stain on more pieces. I looked around and found we have this English chestnut and I'm trying it out. So it's pretty dark. And I would think that the walnut would look like this, but here's the walnut compared to the chestnut. So I think what I'll do is I'll make 32 of these this color. I mean, I'll make 24 of these of this color and this color, the chestnut nut, or the antique walnut, get them all mixed up. Antique walnut is going to be 32 of them. Okay, so I need to do more of those. I need to do 16 of these. So I stained 16 or so of those, the darker chestnut color. Okay, all four colors are pretty distinct and they're drying. So yay! Okay, I'm excited to see how it's gonna look. Yeah, yeah! So, put these squares in the center, like this. As I was putting it all together, I was getting confused. I've been confused during this whole process. The black and white picture just wasn't helping that much. Good thing there isn't a 25th Amendment against woodworkers. So I pulled up the color picture on my phone and that helped a lot. And I saw that if I had a few more pieces of the darker color, I could add them to each side to complete the squares that were there. I didn't have enough to make the quilt as large as it was in the picture, but I think it was going to look fine with a few more darks. So I stained up a few more of those real quick. And while those were drying, I stained up the red ones again. All right, it has been drying for overnight and it looks very, very red, so I'm excited about that. Woohoo! So I put all those red ones back in place and then added those extra dark ones. Ooh, I like it. I like it. So some of them are fitting perfectly together as we can see. So I need to mess with some of them. Um, that's okay. Yeah. So I went around and glued neighboring triangles together to make squares and made a few of the larger squares of four triangles. Then I started assembling the whole thing together. I glued the inner four squares made up of two triangles each to form the large square in the center, then sanded it on each side to make sure they were even. Okay, I squared those up a little bit. I then took each square and did the same thing before I glued them on. And this let most of them fit together pretty well. Yay! 
Okay, I'm gonna go back and I am going to touch up where I sanded a little bit on the sides. I'm gonna to touch up the red. I used a paintbrush and that worked really well to add more stain and hide any spots where the sanding had taken off the red. Then I did the same with the chestnut pieces. Okay, yay! Except for something happened right there with the red. I'm not sure what it is. So I'm gonna to have to go back over that with a little more red, but, and then I'm gonna go back over the gray too. But in the meantime, for now, I am going to make backer. So I'm just gonna put this whole thing on here and trace out a new backer, just like that. So I traced around the project and I cut that out on the little bandsaw. It was a bit challenging because the backer is a little wider than the space between the blade and the side of the saw. So I had to flip the backer over a few times and cut on the unmarked side. It was a little guesswork, but it worked okay. I sanded off a little bit of the hardboard fuzzies. Let's just see. Then checked it real quick. It's gonna go. Yeah, look at that. Woo! Yeah, it's gonna work. It's going to work. Yes. Then put a whole bunch of tight bond quick and thick all over the backer and put the project on it. And I also touched up some of the gray pieces where the sanding had taken the gray off. Then since the transfer doesn't show up real well on the hardboard, I took a small piece of quarter inch plywood and put a verse on that. I put Galatians 2.20. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. It doesn't have anything to do with a barn quilt, but it is an excellent verse, and I hope that everyone can claim that verse for themselves. I also put my logo on there too, and I've been forgetting to date stuff lately. I need to make sure to do that again. Then I glued it to the back of the project. Just a couple more things to do. I'm gonna add a hanger on the back, right there, and then put some finish on the whole thing. Then wiped on the gel poly and wiped it off until it was dry to the touch and let that set up overnight. Well, there it is, yay! So what I learned about this is if I'm gonna do this again, I'm gonna make sure that my pieces are the same size. So I glued them and then I sanded them down to make them more of the same size. And it still, you know, didn't fit together super perfectly, but um, I think it looks good, especially from far away. I don't know why these pieces didn't take the stain well. I even sanded it and re-stained them, and I don't know. They just don't take the stain there. And this was one of those things where I was like, oh yeah, this will be a quick project. And then a week and a half later, I'm still working on it. <sighs> so that's kind of how it always goes. So I want to say thanks for hanging out with me while I tried to figure this project out. And overall, I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah. So, I'll just see you next time. Bye! -bye.
I'm gonna glue the rest of it up now. Woohoo!